Uh, I love this. Notice how closely to exactly correct. They're almost there. Their response to the king is. Here is their response. Ready? The Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand. True. For no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. Probably true. The thing that the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the God whose dwelling is not with flesh. So close to right. Almost there. Plural gods is the problem. And, well, our God does dwell with man, but we'll get to that in a second. The narrator really wants us to see this, to see that they have almost the right idea. They're almost there, but they miss it, right? These pagan men know their religion, um, that their pagan religion is, in the end, empty. They worship it, but they have to know in the end it's empty, right? They are driven by fear and ignorance, but up until now they've been able to put on a good show. But they're being called out on it now, right? They've confessed this much, right? That no one could do this. This is an impossible task, right? Um, if their gods really existed, if they really existed or had the power that they've claimed, then uh, why could they not provide the dream and its interpretation? So Nebuchadnezzar is kind of calling their bluff here. So from the outside looking in, they, again, are more correct than they know. So it's true that only God can do this. And it's true that their gods do not live among man, but our God does. Our, our, our God actually does reveal his plans to them. And actually, in Amos 3, 7, it says, For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, prophets. We have a God who does reveal his plan to us. Now, does that mean that every day we know exactly what's going to happen step by step? No. But we have scripture that have laid out for us history. And these people know he predicted the Messiah will come, and he gives all these signs to show it, right? We know that someday the Lord returns. God has promised these things. He's a God who has not left us in the dark. But he's let us know that he has a plan of history, and that plan is forward. So one of the things that passes um, is the idea of common grace, or common grace, right? This is the grace that God extends to even the non-believer, right? Um, we talked before a little bit how the idea that, that, you know, that good things happen to bad people, but also bad things happen uh, to good people to last week, right? So we see an example here where that the, the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike, right, as, as Scripture says, right? So these pagans are generally wrong, but they are still made in God's image, right? And even they have a grasp on some truth. They can't not have a grasp on it. The king, also a pagan, receives a true dream from God, right? That seems interesting, right? This pagan king receives a true dream from the true God, right? In the end, the lives of all these pagans are going to be saved by Daniel's obedience, right? Um, and faithfulness to the one true God, right? Common grace says that in, even though these men are pagan, right, um, God has, has grace for them as well. They see some truth in God's image, right? And they are almost there in so many ways. By the end, the end they, they fail. 